promotional consideration paid for by the following. Catfish Johnny's Restaurant, serving the Lake Penasofki and surrounding areas since 1990. For the last 33 years, we have strived to serve great food at great prices and a friendly casual atmosphere. If seafood isn't your thing, our burgers or wings are the best around. We have daily specials too. Check us out on Facebook or Instagram for more information. Central Screen Services, LLC, in collaboration with Mask and Sons Incorporated. All screen services are available. We offer a variety of colors, durability, and sizes for all your screening needs. Pool areas, patios, and more. Call 352-603-4099 today for your free estimate. Proudly serving all of Citrus, Sumter, Hernando, Lake, and Pasco counties. To find out more, check them out on Facebook. Lions Only Landscape. Looking for landscaping or trimming done in your yard? They provide services such as landscaping, rocking, curbing, driveways, and more. Proudly serving the Villages area. Reach out to Mike Zapata or Fernando Arredondo for free quotes and more info. Duto Realty is a homegrown business with an eye for getting the job done right. From football games to Sunday school and everything in between, these ladies care about our community and the people in it. Helping buyers and sellers in all of Florida with all types of transactions including residential, commercial, farm, or vacant land. They do it all. They even offer auction services and sellouts to always get the job done right. Today's special guest is um, a good friend of mine. I've, I've known him for a long time. We went to preschool together, and mm. uh, that's when it all started, mm. a good friendship. And uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, our guest for today's podcast is Mr. Matt Ellis. Matt, Boom. Matt, how you doing, buddy? Boom, Billy. Glad <clears throat> to be here, buddy. I mean, with a click of a button, you can have a, a coach watch your film. Yeah. I mean, literally, you can yeah. tag a coach on Twitter, and the coach watches your film. Mm-hmm. Uh, usually, not. I mean, that doesn't just because you tag them doesn't mean they'll watch it, but. It's easier you know, for them yeah. to watch. And, and and the thing is, too, is, man, again, hard work. I don't care if if you want to achieve something, it's you right. got to work. Right. Period. You got to work. Right. You got to have work ethic. There's no other way around it. There's not. So. So, um, you know, you said May you signed. Yes. You know. So I'll never forget this. You know, where it's at the end of the year. We're trying to figure out what we're going to do. I'm saying we're getting yearbook signed. Still have this. Getting yearbook signed, and you write, I don't remember what you wrote, but you said, Go Dolphins. And I thought, man, this guy is just wasting ink on my paper because <laughs> I know he's not a Dolphins fan. Yeah. And I said, I don't know why he put that. So I asked him, you're like, that's Jacksonville University. And I'm like, oh, okay, now it makes sense. Yeah. But I was like, why did you put Go Dolphins? <laughs> You're a Packers fan. Yep. Why? 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 And so I found yeah, out yeah, that. Yeah. I didn't even know that even, I didn't even know they had a school there. I had J-U no Dolphins. J-U yeah. Dolphins. So, so yep. tell me about, let's go back just a hair before that. Um, did you have an idea what you wanted to do? Did you want to play College football. Oh, yeah, man. I Yeah, it was a dream of mine. Yeah. You know. Um, I mean, I was pretty heavily recruited, you know. Uh, I mean, I remember Southern Miss coming to the school and, and measuring me. Uh, the coach actually measured me. Um, I remember having phone calls with Coach uh, Ronnie Cottrell at Alabama mm -hmm. would call the house and we would talk on the phone. I mean, um, I, I mean, so many coaches uh, calling the house and having conversations and stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, loved that process, you know, kind of was validation. Oh, yeah. okay. I, I, I am pretty good at this thing, you know? Yeah. And so, um, so yeah, I mean, uh, my dream, I mean, obviously as you know, yeah, it was NFL, you know, playing right. the league, you know. Right. Um, but I was also in the air of quarterbacks were six five, six six, 
you know, they were yeah, yeah, big big guys, and big here guys. I am at you know little six foot, you know maybe a little over, and you know, so I was beh- kind of behind the eight ball with with that. But you know, J- Ju ended up being a spot that I kind of just felt like I had a chance to either go to J. It was either uh, it was two places. It was either Ju, yeah. Or go play, or it was Ju Junior College, or um, had a junior college in Mississippi, or uh, a college uh, Ottawa uh, University oh. in uh, Kansas, and I actually took an official <laughs> official visit to Ottawa University. Oh. Me and my dad get picked up in this Pinto. The the doorknobs they pick me up. It's a GA. It's a graduate assistant at Ottawa University. I'll never forget this. My dad goes to open the front door and the door the door knob falls out. Dad's like, "What what is going on?" <laughs> we run out of gas getting back oh at them taking to us. I swear, dude, I can't make this up. Run out of gas. The guy thought the car was broke. Dad my dad asked the GA, the kid. You know, GAs by the way are they're still in school. They just assist. Yeah. The, yeah. The 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 coaches. So the dad goes, well, yeah, son, you, you got any gas? <laughs> the kid's like, uh, well, come to think about it, I don't. The ga- I, man, maybe that is what it is. <laughs> so we, we call AAA. Oh my gosh! My dad calls AAA. Yeah, mind you, he uses his AAA. Gets gas. Then, then the kid's like, well, I, I don't have any money to get to get more gas. And then my dad has to forget, dude. It was as something. I'm like, well. Oh. Not coming here. Yeah, that trip costs you guys. About <laughs> so then, so then, bucks. so then, the next morning we show up at the school and start the visit. And by the way, the head coach who was at Ottawa is now the head coach at Eastern Michigan. Currently, gotcha. He was the head coach at Ottawa when it, so head coach. How how was your how was everything? How was your ride in last night? And my dad goes, well, about that. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you that GA n- never coached another He's day. Like, ah. Yeah, that co- head coach was so golly, he was so mad. Like, forgot to put gas. In, right? So he hmm. was pissed. But anyway, so you know, I actually, looking back, I should have went to Ottawa. You yeah. know, looking back on things, they were like, I mean, they're NAI, whatever. But they were, but as a kid, it's like NAI or go play Division One football. Well. You know, I yeah. think kids get misconstrued with that nowadays too. You right. don't have to play; it's not power five or bust or D one or bust. Right? There's good football no, at all find, divisions. They're gonna find you. There's, just like it's that. just yeah. the number one tight end in the country this past year in the transfer portal was at Shorter University. He, he's at ten, he signed with Tennessee. He was at Shorter University, which I don't even know. What which that is. is in Rome, Georgia. Rome, Georgia. They're a D two school. Oh wow! So I mean, there's there's kids everywhere. Yeah. But anyway, so I, you know, looking back, that's probably where I should have really should have gone. But go to Ju and, um, you know, start your, uh, start my football college football career, and I thought I was just there to play football. I didn't know you had to go to class. <laughs> So any any uh, any of that you know good old scholarship financial aid money you Gone. had, uh, Matt, um, I need you to come to my office <laughs> to get put on academic probation. I mean within the first semester. I mean just stupid, you know. I, I, I go there for one year. I actually got one game. I was number two on the depth chart because of injuries and stuff. Right. And I may travel my freshman year. I actually practiced really well. Um, coaches loved me and and all that, yeah. and you know had mandatory study hall as a freshman, but it, to me it wasn't mandatory. Yeah. So uh, optional. I, I didn't I didn't feel the need to go, and so you know whenever all that happened, you know it was the next the that summer is whenever the coaches brought me in and was like, look, you you know, yeah, you can stay. You, yeah. You're not going to get any money, and and then of course, my parents were like, "Well, you can't stay there." Yeah. So then that's when Val Gunn comes back into the picture. Okay. Who was the head coach at Wildwood High School? Right. He was uh, in between jobs and living in St. Augustine. So 
call up Coach Gunn. Coach Gunn, I'm moving in. <laughs> so I moved in with Coach Gunn and tried to go on the junior college route for a little bit, but then realized, you know what, this school stuff just ain't for me. Right. So, anyways. Well, let me let me ask you this real quick. Or i got to bring something up. I, I totally forgot I was yeah. going to ask you, and I, I totally forgot. But before you even did all this, this is but let's go back to your – I believe it was your between your junior or sophomore year. I got to I got to bring up the the accident. What accident? The accident with your Oh, the thumb, the thumb, <laughs> the thumb accident. Yes. Yeah. So we got to we got to we got to talk about that. So cuz cuz that almost that almost Yeah. that almost uh ruined everything. Yeah, so I mean, you know, what people don't know is you know, I was a baseball guy, man. <laughs> Uh, baseball was something that came natural to me. Um, in my eyes, I was a very good baseball player. Right. Um, so, yeah, so, it, it, well, let's talk about the accident, I guess. But, yeah, 16 years old, first job, first day on the job. Oh, it was first day? Oh, my God. <laughs> Welcome. My dad was like, HR nightmare. My dad was like, well, when I was a kid – I played at, or I, I, my first job was on the golf course. And it was at, and my dad worked at the Continental Country Club yeah. in Wildwood. That's my dad's first job. He yes. worked at Continental too. And uh, Mr. Young was the greenskeeper there. Good, he was good friends of the family or whatever. And yeah, I got the job and came in the first morning at like 4.30 in the morning, whatever it was, and 16 years old and, he gave me a quick rundown. You know, of course, back in those days, there are no regulations or anything. It's just, oh, you're gonna, oh, you're gonna come out here and mow the greens. Okay, great. Here's what you got to do. Yeah. You know, no like week long training. It was just like, here's how this machine works, yeah. and this is what you got to do. Exactly. You know, that's just the way it was back in those those days. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know how many greens I, I had. Well, it wasn't greens. I was doing tee boxes, and I don't know how many tee boxes I had gotten through, but. My in my my fifteen minute training seminar that I took, your brush your cor- <laughs> correspondence yeah. course. They were like when the when the baskets get full in front of the reels, you just take your hand and scoop them out, and throw it over there in the in the woods over there. It's like oh okay. So I had to probably mow I don't know three tea, tea boxes or so because it was the first time the back boxes there the baskets had gotten filled up right. So I drove it out, drove the mower over there and reached in to scoot the baskets. And I just reached back a little too far and that reel just took my hand. Oh. Just rip it out. I thought a stick had just hit it or something. You rip my hand out and it's. <laughs> oh, well, that's not good. That's a. That's going to. Oh, there's a guy on the green. Hey, hey, guy. <laughs> Hey, over here, buddy. I need some help because uh, you know I, my body was in such shock. I didn't. I didn't feel anything. Nothing yeah, was. Uh, yeah, nothing yeah. was hurting. Yeah. I just. It was and just. Then dangling. you felt. <laughs> so then he comes over and he goes, "Oh, oh man!" <laughs> he's like, "Dude, what did you do?" <laughs> so then he's on the phone calling, getting nine one one there, and I mean, blood's just. I mean, dude, it was just. It was nuts. Nuts. <laughs> nuts. I would have loved to have seen his face like. Yeah, yeah. He, what are you doing? He, I, rem- I don't remember the guy's name. I don't, but I he was an older gentleman. Oh, I bet he was like you took two years off his life. He was, like, oh, <laughs> about to pass out. He goes, dude, that, that man, that's not good. <laughs> He's getting the phone, juggling. He's <laughs> juggling the phone, you know, flow flip phones back then. <laughs> but um, but yeah, so yeah, I mean, that was the summer. That was the summer going into my junior year, right? Yeah, so set me back a while, man, because I got like I'll use the word gangrene. I don't know what the infection, but I got really bad infection in it. I had five total surgeries. Yeah, you know, within a span of a few months, they ended up taking a bone graft from my hip, put it in the thumb, you know, wow. all that crap, and then uh, Coach Sherman. I still have, I still have a, I think I still have it somewhere, a letter from, from Coach Sherman 
when I was in the hospital. Because, dude, I was depressed. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, I just, as a 16-year-old kid, you know, you're like, dude, you know, at that point in time, sports was everything yeah. to, to me. And uh, you, didn't know, you didn't know how long the rehab was going to be. No, nothing. You didn't know if you could play again. Yeah. But so I, all these things are going through your head. Yeah. And, but I was terming, and then Coach Sherman came to the hospital, and I told Coach Sherman, laying right there in that, in that hospital, I said, I'm, I'm playing. I'll be ready. Trust me. Wow. And so I remember him, you know, after all those surgeries and doing that, and it finally got, you know, and it was so tender. But I remember going to uh, the prosthetic place off 48. Yeah, 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 yeah. Coach Sherman took me there, and they made me – a, I don't know, the specialized thing that protected my thumb. And wow. uh, I was able to, you know, we changed up the snap that year to be able to take a snap and all that. And uh, so anyways, but yeah, I, I, um, that was a, that was a tough, tough deal, man. That broke me. Yeah. You know, I learned a lot of stuff through that, through that period of my life, but, uh, as a young kid, anyways. Yeah. But um. So yeah. I remember coming. I remember coming to see you, and uh, just like you know, coming to see. You. I knew. I knew it was kind of hard on you, but I remember I was like, man, I don't know if he's ever going to get to play again. Yeah. Well, you I know? didn't play baseball my junior year. Oh, really? Because mm-hmm. of that? Yeah, and I, you know, was it hard to uh, grip the just because the bl- the glove? It was uh, my, glo- oh, it was oh, my so glove hand. So that okay, every yes. time I would catch that pa- that Ooh, it yeah. would I don't know what, but it was just. Because you always caught the ball kind of in the palm. Right. Is it like scar tissue or is it like? I don't know. Well, nowadays, of course, it don't hurt at all. But, I mean, back then, I don't know what it was. Just so sensitive. Because there's – I have – well, yeah. I mean, that bone's fused in there. So, I don't know if maybe that was – I don't know. It just wasn't – And holding a bat. I couldn't really hold a bat. So, it was – jarred. Yeah. I could see it uh, hurting. And especially after coming off a great sophomore. I had a great sophomore year playing baseball. Right. And – uh. So that that was kind of that hurt. Even though I did, I didn't miss a game. I went to every game as a as a junior. I right. dressed and everything, but I didn't play. Gotcha. Just because I know it was hard on you. Again, being around the guys, right, and right, right, stuff right. like that. Your Showing buddies. support. Yep. That, that, that was a good thing. So, but anyways, but yeah, but yeah, that was a uh, interesting time in in life. Well, I didn't mean to bring up old old like. Oh yeah, no. But but yeah, but people but people make fun of me. You know, they think that I was outside mowing with the old, you know, John Deere. No, and what, it, people think that I stuck my hand up underneath the deck of. Well, a, that's that's a exactly what I thought. But yeah. I wasn't like an old John Deere. I thought I knew you worked at the golf course. Yeah. But I thought you had went to grab something and it and it was like stuck and it and it like went through it like yeah. like you know yeah people can't. don't realize real mowers, you know, real mowers are on the all on the, the front stuff, the blades yeah. on the front yeah yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. I, no, I I understood that. I just yeah. I thought something had like you know, you know, it, it had bound or like bound up, and you like yeah. you let it go, and you weren't expecting it to go. And I thought right. it was like, man, that's crazy. So then you know, and then of course the famous thumbs up happened all in high school. Everybody would, <laughs> everybody gave me thumbs up everywhere. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> so. But yeah. Uh, well, let's see. Good times. So okay, so let's go. And now that I've rewound it and back to the future. It went back, back to the future. Yeah. Um. Let. let so so Ju, you got you, you were you were done. Yep. So then what happened after that? What? Call Clint Hart. Yeah. Call Clint Hart, and uh, he had he had just, I think he was with the Tampa Bay Storm at that time. Call Clint Hart and like Clint need to uh, need to go that that route of the the arena ball. I yeah. still want to play. Right. Um. So I, he had um, got it to where I got a tryout with the Tallahassee Thunder. Right. And uh, with the Arena Two team, and <clears throat> so I want to say that it was me. I want to say Booby went with me too. I want to say that Booby had finished had finished college, and I want to say that he and I both went together. I, I could be wrong with that, but anyways, yeah. 
there was another person that went and I want to say it was Booby. Uh, so anyway, so we go, whatever my dad takes me and I get to day two. So I made the first cut and then, uh, the day two of tryouts, uh, show up and, um, that was the day they took training camp guys, I guess. And I didn't make that final cut. So then you, so you get cut from that and then, you know, it's kind of like, what do you do with your life? You know, at that point. So, um, yeah. So then, uh, again, Val Gunn comes back into the picture. Wow. And cause he was, he had, when he left Wildwood, he went and coached over in the, uh, European league. Okay. Uh, Not NFL Europe, not to be confused with NFL Europe. It was the, um, the EFOF league. Uh, so, uh, European football, American Feder or European Federation of American football, whatever. Um, and believe it or not, uh, Alfred Corbin went over there to play for Coach Gunn. Brian Hogerbrook okay. went over to play for Coach Gunn. Willie Hogerbrook, oh yeah, okay, went over to yeah. play for Coach Gunn. Uh, those just those three guys, uh, guys. I think I think there's one more that ended up going too. But anyways. So called Coach Gunn and was like, I saw that those guys had gone over there and said, "Hey, you know, I still can play." So, yeah. um, so anyways, long story short, do uh, fill out uh, their little deal and send off film. Right. Uh, try you know, you, at that point you tried out via film basically, and uh, so. Coach yeah, they're Gunn, not, they're not going to have you come over there. Either. Yeah, so Coach Gunn kind of sent out. He at that point in time, he was back here in the states coaching at St. Joe's or St. I think St. Joe's Academy here in in Jacksonville. <clears throat> but he had a lot of connections over there, so he'd kind of sent everything out, whatever. And so we, the team that Brian Hogerbrook and those guys had played for, were the team that liked the liked everything, whatever. So then they were like, yeah, well, you know, we'll sign him. So. Go over there, sign a contract. All right. Go to Oslo, Norway, and uh, so starting quarterback. Play over there. It's a little different of a league over there. Um, it's kind of a club type deal situation. Good football though, man. I mean, they. I'd, I'd probably say it was around the level of like a Division two football uh, here in the states, right. uh, college football, so to speak. So you'd have some really good talent, and then you would have, eh, not so good. But right. um, it was a great time. I loved it over there. And uh, so, yeah, played over there and got into playoffs, led the team to the playoffs, and and tore my ACL, both wow. meniscus. Oh, wow. Uh, LC, I had a total knee, knee blowout. Did you get wrapped up or what? Yeah, guy hit me high, guy hit I, me low, oh, basically. Wow. Rolling out, threw the ball, and uh, felt like my knee went about a hundred yards backwards. <laughs> it was so painful. I can but, imagine. So yeah, so did all that over there, and of course, at that point in time, you know, you don't. It's just so it was done. You know, at that point, yeah. I knew that. Okay, real life starts now because yeah. it was nice over there. When you go over there as a uh, an import, they feed you, they house you, and they give you – and you have supplement money. Right. So, you know, I was living for free. I could go to – we had a couple sponsorship restaurants that you could just walk in and eat for free. Gotcha. Um, and then I got, you know, a little bit of money. Right. Uh, so – you know, it was the deal. I would have stayed over there for a few more years had I not, you know, gotten hurt. Um, but uh, come home when real life started, you know. So, what, what was it like living in Norway? Because I've, I've never been, only been to Epcot. Different. <laughs> well, see, um, over there, Scandinavia and yeah. in Europe and stuff, you know, their second lang- second language is, is English. Right. English starts getting taught. At a very very young age, really, not two years of high school Spanish. Yeah, exactly. You know, so you like asking where the bathroom is, right? Or... So it was kind of a, you know, so you, English was known. Yeah. Um. So it wasn't it wasn't bad. 
It was awesome. And it's beautiful country. Love to go back. I haven't been back since I left. Yeah. But. Um, I worked when I, when I did work at Epcot, um, the Norwegian people were just amazing. Oh yeah. Nice. They come over on a 13 month visa mm-hmm. and they'll work the, uh, pavilion. And then that was the only bad part is, you know, they're like, you get some, you get used to somebody at the, the end of their program mm-hmm. and you're like, Oh, I got to go back home and you'll never see them again. Right. It was, it was kind of like, you know, like it wasn't, there you know like, yeah. but that of course that happened with the college program kids too that mm-hmm. you know you get you work with somebody a week and you never see them again you're yep. like, what the what is yeah i'm going home oh i'll see you monday no nope, never again yeah it, it always ended that way but yeah no no a lot i mean just really nice people and of course the country's like the safe i mean it's like one of the safest countries to live in, yeah, in the world i mean it's beautiful there. yeah absolutely and, beautiful yeah so it was it was a cool experience. Yeah. Met a lot of cool people, and I'm still still in contact with a lot of guys that I met while over there. Did, so. did um did the the football the fans take well to you? Was was it like like here in the states where you know you have yeah, fans? They, well, see, they yes. So and they it, you know as an American playing American football, right. you were looked at as you know they had you on a pedestal. Right. So yeah, I mean. Um. Yeah, I mean, it was it was a very cool experience, right? To be and especially too, even playing with other because you know we had on that team we had let's say we had we had a guy from Spain that was legit legit yeah that was an import you were allowed like on those teams you're allowed I think it was um you're allowed like four imports on your roster. Gotcha. Four, maybe it was six. Six imports on your roster, and you're only allowed two imports on the field. Oh, um, at a time. At or? a time. Wow. So. Wow. Yep. Talk about like substitution. Like, all right, how many guys we got there? Yep. So wow. you know, you would sign contracts with imports. So the the club right. would spend all their money on their imports. Right. And then you know, so. How how deep was the depth chart? Was it? Pretty deep, man. Norwegians are huge. Like my offensive line averaged like six four, you know, three hundred. Wow. Uh, just mammoth of individuals. Right. I mean, I remember the my right tackle was uh, his name was Ola. I bet he was six. I ever bit a six 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 seven three fifty. Did you say Ola or Olaf? Ola. <laughs> O L A. The snowman? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I'm too good. Yeah. Nah, they have names like this. Oh, yeah. Cool. It's, it's like, so, uh, but yeah, just big people. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Big, yeah. big people. Every Everybody that, I'm, I'm, I kid you not, everybody that worked at Epcot, they were always tall. There yeah. were no short people. Including the women. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, yeah. everybody. Females were And they were, were all tall blonde haired, blonde haired, blue uh, eyes. Uh, blue eyes. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I mistakenly told them they were Swedish one day, and they, they didn't like that. No. Much. I was like, no. oh, you mean it's not the same? Promotional consideration paid for by the following. Cone Ice. Cone Ice is a shaved ice truck that brings a one-of-a-kind tropical experience to you. Guests can flavor their own Kona Ice on our signature flavor wave, dance to our island music tunes, and enjoy a nutritious and delicious treat. Contact Jeremy and Marissa at 352-403-0515. Don't forget to follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Pat's Taps at Catfish Johnny's. Pat's Taps is Lake Penasofsky's newest tap room, offering 14 rotating craft beers on tap. We also offer bottled domestic beers, seltzers, ciders, and wine, as well as a variety of appetizers and puffs. Our family-friendly tap room is a great place to come hang out and enjoy some one-of-a-kind craft beer. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, or the Untapped app. Is the exterior of your home or business covered in dirt, mildew, or mold? Driveway or walkway stain? Pressure King can make your siding, deck, vents, and concrete look new again with no damage. Pressure King has cleaned the exterior of houses and businesses all over Sumter County area. Usually it takes less than a day and costs less than you would expect. Call AJ at 352-457-7209. I remember traveling. We, we you know, we would travel. And you know, we we traveled all over the place. I mean, we played in Sweden. That was one of the worst games. So cold. 
I mean, I just remember we played outside. Yeah. Now, granted, we, you know, your season ran, well, training camp started in February, which our training camp was inside. But then our practice, we practiced outside. Right. I'm like, bro, what, what are we doing? Did they have any stadiums, like domes? Oh, yeah. Big stadiums. We played in a soccer stadium. Oh, so they're all open. Oh, yeah. Okay. Big. Gotcha. But I remember going to the first practice and seeing these mounds of snow <laughs> just push because they to, to you know push all yeah. the snow off the Get field. All, clear the field. And uh, but yeah, playing in freezing rain and snow and the ground would be so hard, man. Oh. I mean, because we played it was basically astroturf. It wasn't like the turf it is today. Right. So when as a quarterback you'd get hit, you feel like every bone in your body right. was breaking. You know. But uh, so yeah, but I, I had learned real quick how to stay warm at practice. I I I went I went and, and bought a you know the the fat man suits that you you sweat the sweat suits yeah 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 I went and bought one of those <laughs> and I would wear it and then I'd put an Under Armour piece over that and dude I would sweat so much at yeah. practice man and it, and it worked it kept dude. it kept everything yeah, yeah, yeah. locked in wow but anyways but yeah. But so we we training camp was February and then season went until like July. Okay. But it was snowing in June. And it was just like wow. Because you know. yeah, because you're you're up, you're up pretty far on the globe yep. there. So. Um. So did they stop that? Did they stop that in Jan or July so that people could still make like if they were able to make the NFL training Europe. yeah, yeah training, training camp. camp. Uh, you had guys that would go NFL Europe. Gotcha. Um, it was kind of a, you know, they don't have high school football or they right. don't have college football over there. But if you really think about it, you know, you do have a lot of kids that that end up getting into the NFL that aren't that are right. You know, from abroad. Right. So that they have to play somewhere, right? Right. Um, so I would, you know, that league was kind of like a a feeder league, and Americans dominated in that league because right. we were so. F far more advanced so to speak mm -hmm. you know in in that um you know that competition level um so but anyways yeah i mean it was kind of like a, a feeder league so to speak right so when you yeah. were talking about earlier when you were talking about um the arena league you know boo had touched on that and i didn't know there were tiers mm -hmm. in arena league i thought it was just arena league I didn't know there was like a tier one, you yeah. know, like a base level, then a you know. Yeah, and I, like I mean, obviously, D1, D2. yeah, they had a, it was arena. You know, Tallahassee Thunder was arena too. Yeah. You know, who said? I think said they made were, like a hundred bucks a game. He said two hundred dollars a week. Yeah, a week. Yeah, per game. <laughs> it wasn't really a week; it was game. Oh my gosh! Like so, you had to play in the game in order to get that yeah, two hundred yeah, yeah, bucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just getting out there yeah. to do anything. Yep. But but, uh, but you know, so it it was fun. Why it lasted. Yeah. And so then you hang up your cleats and, um, you know, that's that. Yeah. And then real life started, so. So you got your kids. Yep. Uh, Caden and Kill. And uh, I never can remember. Kinley. Kinley. And then I have a, never, you know, Yeah, I know. I, I'm a 40-year-old dad with a. <laughs> <laughs> I can never remember the girl's name. She's adorable, but I can't Kinley. Remember. Well, a lot of people joke with me. Oh, you have a daughter? <laughs> Like, well, on. I was, I was, one of, I was like, that's that's a little Matt, 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 <laughs> Maddie, <laughs> yeah, Maddie, yeah. But no, they they are they are doing really well. I see, I I, yep. I keep track of you guys on um, on Instagram, Facebook, always doing something, man. Your parents are always gone somewhere yep. off of, they're everywhere. Yeah, well, my parents are, they love their grandkids, man. They no love doubt, their grandkids. no doubt. I see all those so. pictures. Of the especially just just playing sports in general, yeah. And um, your mom and all those pictures, your dad and all those pictures yep. together. It's just they're just so proud of them, man. Oh yeah, they are. Well, they got one in the military. Oh yeah, that's and a, uh, he's yeah. in he's in boot camp right now. Awesome. So they, you know, Dakota's his. And that's my brother's son. Got so get, really get proud him of him. Show. What he's in the uh, navy. 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 Yeah. Cool. So he grandmother was in the navy. He graduates in May, I think, is when okay. he graduates. So, but yeah, so he's in boot camp right now. And yeah. So very proud of him. They're very proud of him. Oh yeah. That's, so let me yeah. tell you something. My my brother uh, did eight years in the Air Force, maybe nine. I mm -hmm. he'll, he'll probably he'll be he'll correct me. 
But um, I think he did eight. He signed up for a certain amount, and then he got an yeah. extension. Well, anyways, I didn't. I didn't want him to go. I I because I didn't know. I didn't know what to expect. Yeah. And it was one of the coolest experiences. Yeah. Like any, and I know I didn't do anything with. It. I didn't do anything in the military, but from from my being a sibling, and let me tell you something. I had no doubt I had family in the military, but my dad wasn't military. My grandparents were. Uncle was. Mm -hmm. But you do not realize until somebody like you, like say your brother or your sister went in the military Mm -hmm. and they play the national anthem or I was at Disney and they did a flyover. Mm -hmm. The jets are coming over. Dude, you want to talk about lost it. Yeah. I was like, because it just hits you. It's real. Right. When nobody's in there, you see the commercials. I, I'm telling you right now, when, when, when you want to go by James now, <laughs> I call Jimmy. him Jimmy. Jimmy. When my brother joined the Air Force, I saw more commercials for the military than I yeah. had in my entire life. It was like. You were paying attention to yeah, it more. Yeah, you were because, and it was just like the song, like the national anthem and, and, and everything else. Salute our troops. You don't. Think about it. Tell yep. somebody you love right. is they're doing it. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, t- I'm telling no, you. No, it is. It, it is. It's very kind cool. Of, is, it is. It's very, very cool. And it, it, you know, my, so my granddad, my dad's dad, my granddad was, was in the Navy and fought right. in World War II. So, and, you know, so he's, um, he, he was laid to rest in the national, him and my grandmother right. laid to rest in the National Cemetery, yep. <clears throat> which, was very cool experience yep. in itself. And you go out there and, you know, visit his, uh, their grave site. And, um, oh man, it's, so uh, I say that to say with my granddad and all that, right. You know, it, it, it was already at the forefront right. in a sense of paying attention to right. it. Absolutely. And so when he decided to do that, it was just all cool. It's just a cool story. And my granddad it was just real quick. My granddad left his Navy uniform to Dakota. Oh, that's so cool. Before he even knew. Oh, that's awesome. That Dakota was going to be in the yeah, Navy. Yeah, that's, that's, that's even better. <laughs> so it's just, it's just a cool story. It's so just, it's funny how things work out. Yeah, it really is. So anyway, so we're, we're proud of him. Oh, that's, but, uh, that's awesome. So, yeah. Well, shout out to him. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Um, thank you for his service. Uh, and and boot camp is, it's crazy. Yeah. Uh, my brother was there over, over the summer. Yeah. And he's a big baseball fan, and he went from like July till September, and because I remember I remember we missed the East Ridge game, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I remember texting Darian like, "What was our score?" And we killed him. It was yeah. like sixty-two to nothing. You know, ten whatever. Right. But um. When we went out there, or he was out there, he they do all the baseball trades. Yeah. I'm every week I'm writing him, and I'm doing the the baseball trade. Oh yeah, yeah, it was cool. <laughs> That's awesome. And I'm like, hey, the Mets picked up so and so for a right hander. Yeah, yeah, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, they had a four year deal with this guy, you know, because they do the last minute trades in July. And I'll never forget that. It was it was such a cool experience. Yeah. The whole the whole thing. So if anybody's out there that, um, you know, it is scary. Yeah, no doubt. But I'm so proud of him, and and his wife Cassie's still in. She's uh, she's cool. in the Air Force, yeah. Um, and they they're having they're, they're awesome. I mean, listen, I I probably looking back, I I wouldn't have mind going the I I think the military. It, yeah, route. I think it was the unknown. Yeah, well, you know, I think that is for me too. And you know, and because you know, nobody wants to fight in a war. No, and, and what know. what happened when we were that age? Right. Yep. So and that scared me to death, man. Yep. I'm telling you right now. I yep. was like, we, no, everybody else is scared, but but I'm like, uh, and everybody's like yep. getting ready to go, and I'm like, I don't even know what's going on right now, right. you know. So, um, but yeah. So and then you know, my two boys are in the thick of it of high school yeah. football and living out there, the beginning of their football careers. So let, let me tell you something. Them two boys, they they're really wild growing up. <laughs> I remember. I remember, I think it was Caden. Yeah. The, just scream. Remember that? <laughs> just for, for no reason. Ah! Oh, yes, <laughs> yeah. I, do. I do remember I'm that. Sorry now. about that. I mean, you scream tonight. <laughs> but he would just scream, and I'm like, I, I'd look at you and go, dude, what is, <laughs> what is, what is up with this guy? 
What's up with this guy? Oh, and you would just dive so up and be like, I don't know, man. He's just, well, you he's, know, they, they, and they say that their love for football started, you know, just being out. Dude, you got to remember those kids were – I mean, they've been – they were coming out there watching practice and yeah. be around it since they – so there's no wonder that they eat, sleep, drink it. I mean, it's been bred into them since yeah. life. And but. you know what's funny is your highness talks about the, how the kids play play over in the yard yep. while the football game's going on. They're having their own football right. game, and they're pretending to be them. And that still happens to this oh, day. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean – And I know your kids were out there. Or they weren't a, on the sideline. It, right. It's just it, – it's just such a neat – I mean, man, I – I love South Sumter football like no other. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, my kids aren't aren't Raiders, but – I wish they were. Me man. too, you know. <laughs> but uh, I know. I things know. happen in Everybody life. Everybody tells and, you all the time, like, yep. what are we going to do to get them kids Right. Out here? Need a big NIL deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need an NIL in <laughs> high school. <laughs> <laughs> Go call beefs. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but no, I mean you know things happen in life and and they're flourishing and they're doing yeah. great. My daughter's doing great, um, and of course, little man, you know, little man being here and you know that's what's great is is um, I still I'm still around the, yeah. the program. Yeah, I still most seven on sevens. I I get to in the summers. I I get to go out and be around the guys and right. Ty lets me take part and. You know, I still help train some of the quarterbacks yeah. and work with them. And uh, so I'll, I'll never leave this place, man. Yeah. So. Um, man, like I said before, you, you've all you've been a friend of mine forever. And um, I, I'm glad to see you happy and, and um, doing well. And the kids are doing great. And I know that makes you happy. Yep. I mean, it's, it's one of those things where – and I, I look at the – the, the, your boys and see how much they love just the game itself. Yep. You know, and I'll tell you this: I saw um, I saw them at at church, and uh, I know they hadn't seen me in a while. Mm-hmm. And they, he, I think it was Caden, walked right up to me. Was, yeah, he was like, "How you doing?" And like that that meant a lot to me because you know a lot of kids that age are shy and yep. like oh, I don't want to talk to anybody you know right. he was very approachable you know he 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 just he didn't care he came up and yeah just well I, how's I, it going i'm like any parent i think they're awesome i think they're yeah. great but I think you should be very proud of them um you know one thing that i yeah i've done many terrible things and bad things in life but there's one thing i believe there's I, you can't ever redo being a father right you can't Right. Can't redo it unless right. you want to go have another kid. Some, you know, but uh, I take a lot of pride in being dad and being called dad. And right. there's no greater joy, right, than being a father. Yeah. And I'll hang my hat on it. I think I, you know, I think I'm pr- pretty dang good dad. And yep. all the other things that I may not be so good at or failed at or whatever, right. That's one thing I I try to be the best that I absolutely can be. And that's right. being a dad. So, so but, is, there, is there anything you can, <clears throat> any advice you can give to a young athlete out there, like saying nothing coming? Mm-hmm. I mean, you don't, I mean, I know it's hard to talk to your own kids about things. I'm sure you have. Yeah. Um, is there anything you, you could, you could, you would tell a kid to, to motivate them to, to, you know, what, what would you tell someone that's what? Yeah. To well, be better. Yeah. So, Again, the game has changed so much. Kids start training, personalized, individualized training for their positions at a very young age now. Right. Parents are spending – youth sports is a is a multi-billion dollar industry now. Um, kids have access to things that we could have never imagined of having access to. And so with saying all that, uh, I personally believe the only way – the only way to be elite um, is to – kids have to be kids, right? right? Um, kids have to grow up being kids. I think, you know, go, playing, having friend time and having all that is important. Right. But I do think that at, at a certain age where your body starts to mature, especially like around that – seventh grade time right. sixth seventh grade where you kind of have an idea man i, I kind of like this game you know yeah. i kind of like this sport or right. whatever is the moment that 
you start putting in the work. Yeah. Um, I think it's important. I really do. I, I, um, my kids started going to an individual personal trainer when they, they started, you know, sixth grade and right. they go to the same facility. They're there two to three nights a week. And if you want to be great, it takes a lot of sacrifice. Absolutely. And, um, uh, you know, it's a lot to say that you want to do something. Right. But it takes even more to go work. Right. And so. How bad do you want it? Yep. And then by the time you get high school, you know, I tell my kids, you know, and, and my kids are blue collar kids. I mean, they, they, they work their tails off. Right. I mean, they really do. And if you want to be elite and play at a high level, you have to do something seven days a week. Right. And that's not, I'm not saying that you have to train seven days a week or you have to do something strenuous to your body, but right. you're, you're watching, you know, people who are better than you. Right. Learning how they do things on YouTube. Right. Right. Or you're watching your film. Right. You're stretching your, you know, there's so many things to be done. And so, you know, I tell my kids all the time, you know, if, if this is what you want to do, then here's, this is, this is how you're going to have to do it. Right. And, and, you know, to this day, they, they work extremely hard. And just now I would have never imagined a freshman, you know, in high school getting multiple division one scholarship offers. Um, but today it's a norm right. you know, or a sophomore. Right. I mean, most kids didn't right. get scholarship offers until you're junior, senior in high school. Yeah. Um, so, you know, they're at the moment in their lives where they're right. starting to see, you know, the fruits of all their hard work that right. they've been since they've been doing since sixth grade. So my advice is, I guess I went off on a tangent, but work. Yeah. You got to work. You have to put it in. Right. And the the days of just being able to walk out on a field and being a better athlete than anybody else are gone because kids are so much farther advanced because Absolutely. of the work that they've put in. Right to be better so um I, I i saw a video the other day <clears throat> this guy was saying if you if you take 18 minutes a day at 18 minutes a day for a whole year you have over it's like 100 hours mm -hmm. and they say 18 minutes a day you have over 100 or 100 hours or over whatever the math it works out and he said that you are better than 95% of the world population at that, whatever you're doing. Yeah. If you just take, and it's just the simplicity of 18 minutes a day is nothing. Right. But the, the, the part of it is being disciplined to do it every day. That is correct. Going back to what I said about my dad working out every day, he yep. had, a, he made time. Yep. People are like, you know, I, I ain't got time for that. People make you know? time for what people want to do. But it's crazy how just something like that simple in the long run. And I think Tim Tebow said something about if you walk a mile a day and, you know, you're 360 mile, or days a year, you walk 360 miles. Mm -hmm. That's a big right. 365 miles. Yep. It, that's a big to do. Like yep. look at you, what you've accomplished. And it's just such a small feat mm -hmm. that in the long run, the fruits, like you said, are, it's amazing. Yeah, it is. And it's hard too, as parents, because parents have to sacrifice right. a lot too, because right. obviously kids don't start driving until they're 16 or right. whatever. So you, you know, as a parent, you have to sacrifice a lot. And I'll, I'll say this, that it's worth the sacrifice. Yeah. Even if they never play a down of college football or a college sport, right. or if they never play NFL football, right. Uh, right? Like small percentages get that kind of right. stuff. Even if they never get a sniff at it, right? Think about the things that you're, you're teaching them. Right. Right? So like they're learning so much. They're learning about work ethic. They're learning how to be disciplined. Accountability. Learning accountability. Yeah. They're learning things. So who cares, right? Yeah. So, so, and then it Absolutely. also teaches them this too, that I've always preached to all my kids that if you're going to do something, yeah, we ain't, we ain't going to do it just to do it. Yeah. We're going to do right. it with a purpose. Yeah. 
because what's the use? Right. Right. Now, granted, again, T-ball, all that stuff. Sure, you're doing it for fun. I'm talking, you know, when you're getting into that middle school range. Right. Why do it if you're not going to do it at 100%? Right. So I always preach that, you know, if we're going to do something, we're, right. we're going to do it at 100 miles an hour. And so I say to the parents that, you know, you're going to have to sacrifice some. Right. But in the long run, that sacrifice will work out in their adulthood and when they become men and women, right. you know, um, in society. So. But you know what's funny is even if even professionals need to be reminded from time to time, why they got in that why they played that sport in the first place mm-hmm. is it because you wanted to or was it because you know this was the only thing you could do right. or were you having fun yeah and there's a i don't remember who it was but they they would tell their professional team it's an mlb team you need to go back to when you first started playing and why you started playing yep because you lose that yeah you get that that I don't know what you would call it, but just where you're the motion of continuously doing something over and over right. where it becomes monotonous. And then you lose, you lose all track of why you did it in the first place. Yeah. And a lot of people get lost in that lost yeah. in translation of, you know what I mean? It's they like, do. Yeah. You gotta have a, you gotta have a purpose for it. Right. And if you lose that purpose, then what are you doing it for? So it's more like, so. or it's more or less like a count, you know, it's a, it's a yeah. balance, you know, you gotta, yeah, you, do. you gotta put in the work, get good, but you also gotta want to do it. Yeah. Well, you know I, I, mean? I, I get, I, I've been asked, well, what if you're doing all this, spending all this money and all this training and you do all spend all this time doing this. And what if they don't ever, you know, play a down of college football or if they don't ever, Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. I can't put I can't put a dollar amount on what my kid is learning in this process. Right. Right. I mean, sure, you know, football's not everything. Right. I, I know that. Right. But what they're learning, I'm hoping it's going to help them be great husbands yeah. and great dads. Right. And you know, that's just my belief. But uh, and the same thing with my daughter; she plays volleyball. Yeah. You know, this would be her last year playing it for fun yeah and we've already had that conversation yeah well, i mean yeah. you're gonna have fun doing it but if if this is really something that you're gonna do well right. she'll start training next right. year you exactly. know we'll start because i again i'll just say this i say this all the time as well if my kid came to me and said i don't want to play football anymore i want to um, i want to go play the drums yeah okay all right but we're gonna play the drums all well, the way. Exactly. So now I'm going to go spend my money on finding the best right. teacher. Right. And I'm a, I, you're going to be the best drummer that you can possibly be. Right. Um, so anyways, that's just, that's just how, that's how, uh, that's just how I was raised. Yeah. You know, my dad, my dad did not allow me to be mediocre at anything. Right. And um, so, I mean, that's just the way I was raised and. So I believe that's just what my beliefs are. So. Right. Well, my my dad t- my dad tells me the story that um, he's always wanted a Mustang, like a, a Shelby. Mm-hmm. He loves Shelby Mustang, man. He's always loved, that's his favorite car. And he talks about he, when he was working at the school. Still, he was still he would talk about it. And then he ran into some guy. I don't remember where it was, but he said the guy says, um, "Yeah, I got I got." Three, uh, I got this car and it's really expensive. And my dad says, "Oh my gosh, how do you, how do you afford it?" He says, "Well, I got three jobs." Mm-hmm. My, my dad's like, "Forget that." Yeah, right. I'm not doing that. Yeah. And the guy looked at him and said, "How bad do you want it?" Yeah. And it was, again, something very simple. I wanted this car bad enough that I'm willing to work three yep. jobs and I'm happy because it. it's what I wanted, and I did it. Yep. So it, it that goes along with sports too. How bad do you want it? Yep. Do you want to be medi- Do you want to be mediocre? Do yep. you want to be the best? Yep. And that has a lot of, to do with your training and your yep. work ethic and everything. Sure does. So man. it's not. So I get it. I, I know it's not just sports. Yeah, and I I used to tell, you know, when I coached quarterbacks at South Central, I used to tell those kids, uh, you know. When you step foot out on this field, what are you going to do to be different? Right. Because 
you know, we're here to be, we're here to be different. Right. We're here to be better than everybody else. Right. So what, what are you doing to be different? And I, you know, I tell my kids that too, to, to this day, you know, when, whenever, whenever we turn on the film, I, I don't, I don't have to know who you are. I don't know, have to know what position you play. Right. I don't know. I should be able to turn on that film and say, whoa, who, who's that kid? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's what, in the sports world, that's what you're chasing. Yeah. You're chasing to be different than right. everybody else. Yeah. And uh, no matter your size. Yeah. No matter how big you are, none of that stuff. What well, else to be big? Just like that, that guy at Lake Highland Prep you pointed out, too. Oh, you Max said, Starks. Yeah, he said, oh, there he is. You didn't you – didn't, Yep. He didn't even I mean you really didn't focus on him. He was like, Oh, there he is yep. right there. Big Mac starts. Because you make you make uh yep. you make your name. You know, you do what you gotta do That's to right. get your name out there. Um well listen, I, I I appreciate you coming out today. Um I'm I'm glad you were able to, to do that for me. I've I've when I put all this together I was thinking, you know, who am I gonna have on here and <laughs> And we're not always going to talk about football, and that's, oh, a, that's I think that's great. That's yeah. the thing is, I I, I want to express that to everybody. I, I know I've had a lot of football mm-hmm. guests, but it's not always, always going to be like that. No. So when we do venture off and we talk about real life and yeah. our parents and everything else, I mean, that's why I want to do it because keep it real. Yeah, man. It's that's just, what that's uh, you know, I, I loved watching Coach Sherman's episode. I, only because one is I respect the man like he's my dad. I right. mean, I I love that man like you wouldn't believe. But um, so it was cool. But it, it just in course, Coach Sherman's always been authentic. There's yeah. Yeah. He, he's about as real as you can get. And so yeah, you know, just keep it authentic. Yeah, and I think it's so far so good. And we're just oh, gonna yeah. keep going to keep plugging at it. I've got people from Orlando, my my friends at Disney. I want to have come on. Yeah, absolutely. Just, just I just want to talk about things, you know, that I, either I was a part of or people that I know yeah. that have those interesting stories, backgrounds, whatever. Yeah. And they ain't all have to play professional football yeah. or or any no. other sport. Real quick. And yeah, then, man. And then we can cut yeah, it off. Yeah, you're good. Do you remember me, you, Del Clayton, oh, in, our, in our used car video? Oh. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. I do. Yes, yes. Mm. Okay, so so let me. I, I can I can paint, and I you know what? Somebody, there is the tape. If somebody can, find I wish the, somebody. If I, somebody can find the tape, I will convert it over to whatever format yes. I have to. Dale Clayton, find the tape. Dale Clayton, please, Penny. I don't know who had it. I don't even know who videoed it. Do you remember? No, I don't even remember. But but to 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 paint you a picture real quick, the. The concept was for our economic class. Yes. We had, oh, well, let me, I got a sidebar on that one for you. Um, but the gist of the thing was to come up with a, a, with a commercial that you could present to the class that you were either selling something or you were promoting something, whatever. So I was like, all right, we got to do a used car sale, but we'll do it in the student parking lot. <laughs> so... We went and it was you. We all parked together. Yep. And Dale had that Bronco. Yep. You had your Saturn. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and we put little signs on. We didn't have stickers. We just had like no, cardboard. Yeah, Car- yeah something like cardboard. Because it was like on the run. Like we were right. like, we, we didn't want anybody else knowing. Yes. Yeah. School, you know. So we, um, I remember taking the thing and I'm like, What's what do we got on the Bronco over there? And, and Dale's like, um, two thousand and uh, two thousand dollars. And he's like, and it's like two zero zero zero. And, and he feeling goes, crazy. And he goes, I'm feeling crazy. Like, don't talk, don't talk, don't, don't do it. He's like, and he just rips it in half. So I'm like, he's like, twenty dollars, twenty dollars. We're slashing prices. Come oh get it. And, and and yours had a cell. Oh, this one's got a cell phone in it. What's the number? And that was our number. It flashed across yeah. the screen. Like, come, you know, you gotta come down and. Um, another thing was Deputy North was, oh, uh, yeah. rest in peace, Deputy North. Um, he pulled up the cop, he pulled cop, up the cop car. car and he acted like he cuffed us yeah. in the back of the cop car. And, um, one of our, um, 
I remember ending the video with, if your car is stolen, we done took it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great, you know what? Um, Jen Hooten still talks about that tape. We got to find that we gotta, tape. We got to find it. But the sidebar for that was uh, Coach Gostad. Mm-hmm. Remember we had him? That was, that was for yep. that same class. Yep. Um, I remember Noe was sleeping on the desk. Mm-hmm. Right? He was sleeping. And everybody's like really loud. And he's like, all right, guys, you knock it off. Like, come, go back to work. You know, it's a senior class. Knock it off. You know, he lets it go. We're still loud. Yeah. Let me hear him. So he just walks over and he takes this book, slams it down on Noe's desk. And I think Noe must have messed himself or whatever, because <laughs> I, I would have done the same thing. But everybody's like, oh. and he's like, he looks at everybody and he goes, I'm sorry, did I break your concentration? <laughs> <laughs> we're like, we're like, oh my gosh, you could have gave us all. We, we, we really did have one of the more fun classes. That was a good we, um, we really senior did. senior trip. Senior trip yep. was good. Um, God, that was a, we got to remember getting almost getting ran over. Renahan almost got run over. That was, <laughs> we yeah, go to see the Heisman. It was going, just me, you, and him. And yeah, we, it was only us. They three. let us off the bus. What were they thinking? He, we run across like six lanes of traffic. Yeah. And Renahan almost gets hit. Mr. Renahan was with us. He was a chaperone. He almost gets hit by a bus. That, <laughs> yeah, that guy just. <laughs> he was, and I think he just had like Tourette syndrome after that. Just, just yeah. cursing like a sailor after that. Almost Good dying. Times. Good times. Went in there to watch. Look at, look at the Heisman. Where they yeah, get out of I know, here. I know. Yeah. That's what we were doing. Yeah, it was just me and you. It was. That's so, how far back we go. Uh, we guys. go back to the, all the way to the Heisman. <laughs> But, but yeah, yeah. But anyways, man, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate you coming on. And well, I, dude, you're always welcome to come on. You just let me know when you're in town. You visit, and yeah. um, just keep keep doing what you're doing. Keep this kid. I can't wait to see where the kids go to school, yeah, what they do with their lives. And it's 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 a it's just a wonderful thing to see. It's fun, um, fun time, right? Very now. fun thing. Yep. But I wish they were here. I wish they were down here with us. They're we, here. We They're could, here right now. I know. Well, I wish we could. That, we I could should have brought them. them in here. Should have brought them in and put them on the show. Yeah. 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 But we'll have to have them on because then then yeah. they'll have a uh, somewhere to go and yeah. maybe we can we can have them um, later on when they sign. We'll have them commit on the Go Blaze show. Yeah. There you go. I'll have a, have a Zoom call with the school. <laughs> so um, I don't know. Maybe maybe one of them will join the uh, the Moffat kids up there in App State. Yeah, yeah that'd since, be fun. Since both of them are out there. Okay. Trevor would be a, a fifth year senior if he stayed for his fifth year. Yeah. When, if Caden chooses to go there. Yeah. Uh, he can. So show he him. would he would be there his freshman year with Trevor. Right. So that would be cool. That would be cool playing yep. together. That'd be awesome. Yep. So, but we'll see. All right, man. Well, Bye, buddy. Hey, listen. Uh, this is uh, guys. Don't forget to follow. Um, let me change the camera here. Thank you. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, YouTube. Uh, we got Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and you can also watch the show on Spotify now. It's under the GoBlay Show. Guys, it's about that time. We're going to head out, so uh, we'll see you later. Have a good one.